is um, saving for college for a new car. X is the number of months worked and f of x represents how much he has saved. How much he has saved. Okay, so let's make a table here. So here's x, here's f of x. So um, in month, uh, month two, he's got $100. In month three, he's got 140. In month four, he's got 180. And month five, we got 220. So let's first let's first calculate the slope. All right. And that's the slope formula. You'll definitely want to have that down. Okay. So go ahead and find the slope for me. And you can use any two points that you want for that. All right, I guess I'll do uh, three and five. Okay, I would I would choose the smaller ones. I, I, I know you can choose any, but like there's, you know, good choices and bad choices uh, that make more and work for you. Some are just easier. Yes, and, uh, uh, you know, it, it seems arbitrary until you get in there and you're like, oh, maybe, 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 I can I should, make <laughs> maybe we can make it easier, exactly. Okay, so uh, if you if you follow along or you see my work, you should eventually get to this line where it's forty over one. Forty over one. So then just. So so what what is what is f of x? What does f of x represent again? Um, f of x equals the how much? So it's money, right? Oh my bad. <laughs> yeah. And what are the units of x? What does x represent? Um, x represents uh, how many months? There are. So I recommend writing them next to the numbers. Okay, so the slope, the slope is 40. Slope is absolutely 40. Slope, the slope is 40. Okay. Now the second part of this is is interpret. So I was just working with a student today that is in college. Uh, math and they had questions just like this where it says to interpret because they didn't learn this stuff the first time so you get it again in college and I know maybe that's not motivation here but um, there there is some value in, in doing it right the first time so interpret is like a sentence mm -hmm. and, and the instructor is looking for something like this for every oops oops let me, uh, so for every one unit increase in x there is actually let me let me uh not do it this way okay what are so the first part is for every and this is where you talk about the x mm -hmm. so what is the x here the x is in months so for every month there is and and then you have to choose here increase or decrease Increase. And the, now it increases because it's, it's positive of, and this is where you put the Y, $40 in, in this case, it's the context. Mm -hmm. So in savings. In savings. All right. So then. So let's like, let me, let me, um, try to explain how we can do this for the, the previous problem that you you had so for for every month there's an increase of forty dollars in savings so for your for your uh, t-shirt question okay if we just if we just uh, copy and paste this here you're going to see how really straightforward this is when you when you know what to do uh, the units of x for every shirt sold Okay, there is an increase again because it goes up. If you look at your, it was, it's five, the slope is five. And this time it's, uh, it's $5 in, mm -hmm. 
what was earned. So do you see how we can use the same sentence every time? But we have so to include we have to include these elements. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. That so it's for every thing that you're doing, there is a either increase or decrease of whatever that y part is. And then you, you have to put the context in, which is in what was earned. All right. Yeah, that's actually pretty helpful because I bet I'll have a question just like that. Yeah. So let's say, let's just say the slope is um, $10 per hour and the context is um, um, your paycheck. I don't know if you work or not, but yeah. <laughs> you didn't, maybe this doesn't make any sense, but it would be for every, for every what? For every, uh, I guess like week. Hour. Oh, hour. <laughs> I thought we were like talking paycheck. For every hour, for every additional hour worked, there is an increase because it's positive of mm -hmm. how much? $10. $10. And then you have to put it in context for the paycheck. So your instructor is looking for just the things that I've underlined. Oh. And I guess that too. So just those base sentences. Yeah. Like that. Okay, so let's say the slope is uh, you're working on your tennis and uh, you get an extra uh, two um, uh, points for every one uh, hour of training. All right, so two points for every hour of training. Yeah, so what What would, uh, and remember, this is your X. So this for is your every hour worked, there is an increase of two points. For, for the what? And you got to put it in context. Uh, for the practice. The training or the tennis, something like that. Okay. For the tennis. Or yes. The tennis team. Yes. Okay, so let's go back to, your, to, to our question that we made up here. Um, let's go back to all of this. So we found the slope is 40, Do you, right? You got that down? So I'm gonna just copy this down because we, we need all of this for the next part. We got kind of sideways on there, but that's okay. Uh, so um, I don't know but okay we don't need all that so the um so part b they want f of zero okay to do that to do f of zero you need an equation you really need f of x and f of x is is mx plus b like you're used to y equals mx plus b but f of x is the same as y y is f of x y f of x f of x is y they're the same same, same, same. All right. Same, same, same. Like you can't, you can't emphasize enough. That they're basically the same. All right. Okay. okay. So now um, you have the slope. We found that the slope is, sorry, the slope, slope was five. I'm sorry, 40, slope is 40. Mm -hmm. So in your problem, F of X, equals 40x plus b okay so to find b you need an x and an f of x or an x and a y do you follow that you you you, mm -hmm. you do want b so you can use any point you want any point you want but there's 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 you know better choices right yeah. um so one better choice is just to use that first point to 100 100. So okay. 100 is the f of x and x is 2. So we're using the point 2 comma 100 from the table. And would b, there's nothing for b, right? No, b is what we're solving for. Oh, okay. So then it would become 80. So like 100 equals 80 plus b. Right. And, and then, then how do you solve for b? And then I'd have to subtract 80. So That's then right. b equals 20. Okay. So that goes back in this line here. So you write f of x equals 40x plus 20. 
40x plus 20. All right. And then that's just showing the proof. Yeah, that's the work. Now that we remember, what did it ask for? Um, it asked for. Um, it asked for how many? Uh, f of zero. Right. So f of zero means you have to put zero in for x. So then f zero equals 40 times zero. So then just 20. Yes. So it's essentially the b value. OK, okay. But, th but then you have to interpret. You have right, to interpret. right, it's like the three-step thing. So this this has the units of y, units of f of x, or, or y. So what were the units of, of f of x? Let's go back and look. f of x represents how much you saved. How much you saved. So the money, basically the amount of money the person has. You saved $20. When you started. So f of zero is the starting point. Starting, starting out the person Billy as twenty dollars. Starting out the person as twenty dollars. Okay. Right, like you, you go you're saving for a car, you gotta start somewhere. So this person mm -hmm. has twenty dollars to start out with. Starting out the person as I mean twenty. Okay. I okay, think so so we're doing this slightly out of order, but write a function to model the data. Uh, the next thing, let me snip this in. The next thing it says is to write a function to model the data in the table. We already did that. That's that's this line here. Write a function to model the data in the table. Okay, so then. We, we already did that to find f of zero. So it's a little bit out of order. All right. So then we have it as 20? Or... Well, no, this whole thing, this whole thing is, is the function. The function okay. is 40x plus 20. So the input, this, this is what's got to be clear. The input is x. Do you, do you, do you follow that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So the input is x. Well, x is the number of months. The output is f of x or y. And that's the money, how much the person has made. All right. So x is input, y is output, right? That's right. That's right. So this function tells you, if, if I give you the number of months, you can tell me the how much money the person saved. 40x was 20. Oh, OK. So they came in with 40. They came out with 20. Well, no, no, no. We, we have x and, and, and f of x from the table, remember? We started out, if you put 0 in, what's 40 times 0 plus 20? 20. OK, and then after one month? 60. 60, two months, 100, three months, 140, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we went backwards. We took the table. See this table up here? Yeah. We, we went backwards. We went from the table to the function. All right. Would it? Is it a big deal if you do it backwards or? Well, that's what they're asking here. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really like the way this is taught, but this is what you got. You know, this is, okay. there's a reason this is terribly confusing every year for students. Yeah. I'm sorry, but we, but when it says write a function, you, it's, a, it's asking for the equation. It's the asking for the equation. Right. Function means equation. Yes. So, like okay. so when it says function, like that's it, you're done right there. But visually, I'm trying to show you what's happening. Like you put a number in, you get a number out. Put a number in, get a number out. All right, input, output, X, input, yes. y, output. And then the rate of change would be just 20, right? Rate of change is the slope. What is the slope of this function? Uh, the slope y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1. No, no, you have the slope. Slope is right here. Oh, my bad. 40. That's the slope. OK. So then 40 is the slope. So then every month it's going up 40. 
Yeah, we, we already did all that. We already, we already said, okay, for every month, there's an increase of $40 in the savings. Okay. Okay. Wait, so what are we asking for now? <laughs> I'm a bit well, well, I was trying to tell you we already did this part. Oh, okay. It's already done. So now, now we're going to do the next part, which is um, find F of seven. Find F of seven. So that means, that means you're putting seven back into the function up here. So then 200, 260. Uh, F of seven means to put seven in for X. So that's so two, 280. 280 plus 20 F equals, or F seven equals 280 plus 300. 300. Now, what is seven again? Seven is your X value. Um, seven is how many months? Okay, so, so you could say after seven months, after what? What happens after seven months? And that's where you, you need that Y value. After seven months, you get $300. $300 where? In savings account. In your savings account. Yes. Input this uh, X, I'll put Y. Input is seven dollars. I mean, seven months. Output is three hundred dollars. Yes. Okay. And then. Okay, so now let's do um, let's do a new one here. So the next one is like, let's say f of x equals um, uh, eight eight. 800 and no, let's do, um, sorry, I'm just trying to find some numbers that work here. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's all good. Let's say uh, f of x equals 480. 480, okay. Okay, then... so we need, so this is now, and if you go back to your function, this is where it's like really, it's gotta be very clear. Um, I'm giving you 480 is this thing right here. This is 480. And you have to solve for X, okay? So in terms of our picture, in terms of our function picture, I'm giving you the output, you have to find the input. All right, so I guess we have to multiply 40 by 480. No, so you, you, you completely missed what I said. Oh my God. I'm not giving you X, I'm giving you F of X. F of X. X is the input, F of X is the output. F of X, here I'm writing that down. F of X is output. So then, huh, okay. Um, and, and I'm sorry, I gave you the wrong, I gave you some bad numbers here. Um, no, you're fine. I'll give you 500 here. 500, so then. So I'm asking you to solve for X. Okay, so then, oh, multiply, minus, subtract 20. Not yes. Multiply. And then you'll have 480 equals 40, and then that would be, I guess, uh, 12, 120. 12, just 12. 12. Because oh, the, right. zeros, the zeros cancel and 48 divided by four is 12. 12. And okay, then, and then you have to interpret. So then I guess we're still doing money, right? It's still the same question, yeah. It's still, okay. X is so, the months. All right, so for putting in 40 months, you will get- It's 12, not 40 months though. It's not 40 months. 12 X, months. 12 months, how much money do you have? $500. Yeah, now some instructors are really sticklers. They want you to say um, the, the money first when you're doing it backwards, but I think it's better to keep it the same way. So after 12 months. After 12 months. You know, $500 has been saved. It's been saved. Okay. Yeah, I might just need to practice this a couple more times before I get it. Yeah, um, we can definitely do another example like this, or we can do um, the next ones. Um, I'll do one more of these. Okay. To try and get this down, since I feel like this will be pretty big in the future. Yeah, sure. Um, so a car is valued at 
$4,000, but loses, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A car's value is shown in the following table after X years. F of X is shown in the table after X years. Okay, so your parents have cars, you'll have a car someday. So um, after two years, the car is worth, uh, let's go $12,500. After three years, it's worth uh, 11,800. And after four years, it's worth uh, 11,100. All right. Okay, so we wanna find the slope. We wanna find the slope. Let's actually, let me, let me do it off to the side here. So that's y2 minus y1. This is f of x, I'm sorry. That's y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so I guess I'd want to do two and three. That would be the easy way to do it. Yes. So then two, I'm going to write this out just because I get them mixed up. Two, 12,500. And then three, 11,800. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So then 11,800 minus 12,500 over three minus two equals uh, minus 700 over one, which equals negative 700. So before we do that, let's put the units of the top number. What's what's the units of the top number? Uh, money. Money, dollars. And what's the units on the bottom? Uh, years. Years. Okay, so I agree, it is minus 700, but now we have to interpret. So okay. for every year- Good. The car's value will decrease by $700. Perfect. That was perfect. All right, sweet. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, maybe this one made more sense, that's why. Okay, so now I'm, we're doing this out of order, but I want you to find f of x. f of x is mx plus b. You know that m is minus 700, and I will copy in the uh, the table again here. So you can, All right, thank you. So you, actually, I'm just gonna force you to use this ordered pair to do it. Okay, um, that's a better idea. The limitations of the screen is, uh, too much. Can't can't scroll very well, but um, I want you to find the function first. Okay. Um, so would I write x is uh, this is x and this is f of okay. x. Yeah. All right. F x equals mx plus b. So then 12,500, or f parentheses 12,500. No, 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 no. This, this whole, this value is f of x. Oh, okay. So I don't need the right f of x. It, no, it takes, it takes the place of it. All right. So 12,500 equals minus 700 parentheses uh, two plus b. And we're solving for b, so b would yes. be. So then that'll leave you with just that. Okay. So you had 1,400 on both sides. And then you'd have to add 1,400. So then you'd get 1,600, I mean, uh, 13,690. Wait, I think I'm doing that wrong. Zero, zero, 900. 13,900 equals just B, and then that would be B equals 13,000. Yes. And is that all correct? Oh, yes. Right, so now your F of X is minus 700 X plus 13,900. 
minus 700x plus 13,000. So then, wait, say what you just said again, please. This is just the function. This was part, this is part B, you know, find the function. Okay. We're done. So that's We're done how here. I should write it is my final. Yes. All right. Fx minus 700x was 13,900. So you have to solve it to figure out the B and then you put in the B. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So now we need to figure out what is f of zero and we have to interpret. All right. So I guess it would be uh, zero would obviously be, you know, no years. So then the car would just be 13,900. Give you me, give me like, like this is, this is where you have to separate yourself from like, maybe, and maybe you don't know enough to do this, but that means that you just bought the car or like the, the, oh, okay. the new price okay. of the car if is you had the car for zero years the the value is about the value is uh thirteen thousand nine hundred dollars and yes. the decrease is zero and then what and the decrease is zero no well see you're adding too much in there you just want uh, to say that you no, just I want to say, say the, basic. You just, the basic less is more here um you don't get you don't get more credit for putting more words down and somehow you know hoping you, you've got the right ones okay so f of zero is exactly what you said it's 13,900 and that's just that's just the new car price new car price you know, it, it can be that simple um all right what is f of uh 10 f of 10 would be uh going down 700 every month so year, year, year. oh i mean year yeah. um that would be expensive so, uh, seven well, thousand plus thirteen thousand nine hundred would be six thousand nine hundred so if you have the car for the value of the car after 10, 10 years after 10 years goes down uh six thousand nine hundred dollars well it goes down to a value of six nine oh it goes down to a value yeah goes down to a value not just down good okay now um let's say f of x is equal to two thousand f of x is equal to two thousand so you have to be very careful here because this is where where we had some issues in the last one um f of x this number replaces this on the left mm -hmm. it is this it's this whole thing so then this is for finding the what again you're solving for x oh just for x okay so, so then... in the previous problem this is careful this is important in the previous problems i gave you x I told you X was zero and then I told you X was 10. Now I'm telling you the output. The output is 2000. Output is 2000. When is the car worth $2,000 is what I'm asking. The car is, okay. So then you have to figure out the X is then. So then you have to, um, for 2000, if you're currently at 13,900, I guess you technically make a table, right? You can solve for X here. Yeah, and doing you, a table. You, no, you don't want to do a table. You want to subtract okay. 13,900 from both sides. Okay. So then you, you get zero. And I, I don't know if you'll be allowed to use a calculator, but these numbers, I mean, you can you can for me if you want. The, the numbers either won't be this big or they'll work out nicer. Okay. This does work out nice. Um, so then you'd have to divide both sides by minus seven hundred. Oh, okay, so then you get a. Here, I'll do the division real fast. Seven hundred into one would be a. Uh, Two, and then that's one. Actually, we can just use a calculator. 
Um, here, let me get my calculator. Yeah, definitely grab a calculator. Um, um, all right. One thousand. Eleven thousand nine hundred divided by seven hundred equals one hundred and seventy, which I don't think is right. No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't divide this properly. Uh, would it be seventeen? No, no. Man, I don't know how I messed that up. 11,900 divided by 700. Give, give me one more try here. We got to. All right. All right. Here we go. I'm not, I'm not, that's not the important part of the question. So uh, yeah, it is, it is 17. Sorry. Um, I, I must have missed. Oh, okay. Okay. So after, so what does that mean? What is, what does 17 represent when it's X? Um, 17 represents 17 years. So the okay, value so that... of the car in 17 years will decrease to, no, no no don't stop saying decrease will be what will it be just say what will it be it will be uh 11,900 no nope that's what what did we start with what, what was that we were yes. going to 2000 would be after owning a car for seven years its value will be two thousand dollars yes that's okay. exactly right will be $2,000. I'm probably being more difficult than your structure will be with the wording, but... Um, well, no, I'm glad because that means I'll just get it right. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully that'll work out on the exam. Okay, so we need to move to uh, this other page here. And right. uh, specifically, we need to do um, a few of these problems that uh, it doesn't look like you, you covered in class. So, mm -hmm. all right. Um, all right, question three here. So the first thing that it asks you to do is to uh, identify the function type and how you know. So this two, this square is the giveaway. The square means that it's a parabola. Parabola. Okay, square. Next thing you have to do is make a table and it tells you the values um that you need all right uh do i need to remember the word parabola like anything? yes yeah probably right. <laughs> probably i do went to the list yeah there's plenty of things here to uh to remember okay so then i guess i do two one or do you start with negative two or positive two like i would like i would start with negative two Okay, so negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Yeah, and you're putting these into the, um, the function here. So like, I'm gonna do that as this off to the side. So it's negative two and then negative two plus one squared. Negative two plus one squared. Okay, right. so, so you have to, uh, first, do the inside part. So then you'd get positive four plus one, which is five. No, 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 no. You, you have to add first. You have to add first. So it's negative two. Negative, negative two, two plus one is negative one squared. And then oh, you, you already wrote it out. My bad. Yeah. And then, um, you, and then you square so then it. You get, uh, positive one. So then negative two times positive one. That's right. Equals negative two. Yeah. So we got our answer all the way over here, which is fine. Okay. And we're going to do it again. For so then negative two parentheses negative one plus one squared. Uh, squared equals zero and then just zero overall because it'll just become uh that's right know. so that becomes zero zero is zero all right and then zero would be plus one squared so then it would just be one and then negative two times one is negative two. Okay. 
and then negative two parentheses one plus one squared equals four negative two times four, which is then negative eight. Yep, and then you got one more there. Uh, that would become nine, negative two times nine equals negative 18. Okay, so these are ordered pairs. So the first one is negative two, negative two. Negative, oh, negative, one, two, negative two. Negative one, zero. Negative one, zero, zero, zero negative, negative two. two. One, negative eight, and two, negative 18. Yeah, so you have to graph these. Now the ones, except for the except for this last point, it's it's not not too bad here. So mm -hmm. um, I'll try to do this for you. So we got we got uh, what did I say here? Negative two. Uh, boy, that's a terrible drawing. Um, negative two. Negative, here, I'll write them down for you, so you don't have to keep scrolling. Yeah, negative two. Negative negative two. Negative two is here. Negative one zero. Negative zero two, negative two. two. And then eight. one negative eight. And then you can see that's where you know two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's where it gets a little bit yeah, it's a bit annoying. Tough. But there you go. So here's your graph. And you gotta label your points. So you gotta you actually need to put down negative one zero, negative two, negative two. Okay, so that's how you properly label it. Yes, one okay. common negative eight. They're really emphasizing this, and I don't. I get it. It's you know, probably uh, not um, not great, but that's. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh well, I, I'm the labeling. It's like I got it now, so it's a pretty easy thing to do once you just know that how to do it. Okay, so then the next questions that it uh, it it says here um, find the key features of the graph. So there's so much here, but like the key features, um, like here's one. This is called an x-intercept because it crosses the x-axis there. Okay, and then there would be no axis of symmetry on this one, right? There is. It's right. It's right down there. Oh right. I was thinking of the one that goes right above it. The like, or one below. It's the uh, what's it called? It's like the straight line, one number below the lowest. It's the um, vertex. Is that it? No, so there you no go. it's not the vertex. It's the um. It has line in its name. I don't know how I can't remember it. It's the um, oh my goodness, what's it called? Let me check my old notes with you. Well, the other important feature here is um, is the y-intercept. Y-intercept, all right. Yeah. So that would be uh, two, or button, negative two. Yeah, zero, negative two. And the other important feature is the, um, is the, uh, and well, now we need to uh, talk about the domain and range. Mm -hmm. So the domain for everything that I'm seeing here that you're ever going to, the domain for everything is going to be X, such that X is an element of the real numbers. And that's, that's just always, it looks like that's always the case. So like just always for D, you just have to write that. Uh, probably, yeah, probably. All right, man, I really got to remember that, like in my brain. Yeah, I mean, this is this is like the easy stuff where you, you just write it down and you get points, you get credit for it. All right, D. All right, I, I'm writing that down again right now just to really be sure. So is it like a E type thing, like the right before the R? It's a Greek letter. It's like a it's like a C with a line through it. Okay, C with a line. Okay, 
And that's just one of those things where it's like, you'll just, it's like, that's just the way it is. Yes. Like the whole uh, domain formula. Yes. All right. The range is more difficult. We're, we're covering so many things here. It's, it's, it's so out of scope, but that's, that is the case. So the range is, is why. Why? And it's, it always starts out this way as well. Why is not with real numbers, but so it's depending the same slope as the, or not slope, it's the same right out as the domain. Except you use Y instead of X, but we have to add another piece here. And this piece is based on the graph. And the piece is based on the graph. So then, uh, so it's based I, on this. It's like, what's the largest or biggest, what's the smallest number or the largest number? And the largest number is zero. zero. Man, that's kind of weird to think about. So it's y less than or equal to zero. Yeah, no, th this usually isn't taught in this class. Mm -hmm. So then y is greater than or equal. No, so less, less than less. All you do for this is you write the formula for the domain. Yeah. And then it, instead this, of x, you use y. Right. And then you add a comma, mm -hmm. y, and then if, exactly. and then would it always be? Well, no, because if, if the graph opens up or it, it, there's so many variations, on this, that's why this is so tough. Um, and then it's just whatever the biggest number is. Or the smallest number. So like, let's say, let's say this one was opening up, this one would be y greater than or equal to zero. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, okay. So it's where it's like at the peak of the graph kind of. Yes, but some graphs are all real numbers. <laughs> so oh, it's, it's, this is, I don't know why they do this. Like they, they're, they're like trying to introduce functions to you and show you all the functions, but uh, you're not ready for that. Yeah. All right. Well, I just got to really try to remember, get all that down. Yeah, it's, really? it's, it'll be, it'll take a little time here, but um, probably get it. All right. Okay. So I definitely feel better about that now. All right, so let's look at number two because it's a little bit odd. So BX equals 28. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing as we did before. Oops, that was no good. Before we talk about what this is, let's just make a table. Minus two. Okay, so minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. So minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. Then you get, uh, so like for this, like all I, like I was asking another student to help because the teacher is like being really unclear. So here, like here. What the... I actually got was like just negative two, 28. No, the, here, 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 the, this means, this, this means you have to read it this way. Y is always, 28. Okay. Oh, I wish they're all like that. <laughs> so then I guess you just have to write like negative 2, 28, negative 1, 28, 0, 28, 1, 28, and 2, 28. And then put it into the graph. Okay. Uh, so, so do you see how this is always 28? Mm-hmm. So that means the graph, and, and we have to kind of be, we have to just, uh, oops, we, we don't want to count down, but let's just, let's just assume that that's, well, I'm sorry, going the wrong way. Let's just assume that that's 28. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, you're graphing these points, like there's minus two, there's minus one, there's zero, there's one, there's two. They're all, uh, they're all on the, on a horizontal line. All in a horizontal line. Okay.
So then, why? So whenever you get a, whenever you have y equals a number like this, mm -hmm. it, it's always a horizontal line. Always a horizontal, okay. Would there ever be a case where it's all vertical? Not, no, not in the, not in these, not in the way, not in what you're doing now, but yes, mm -hmm. yes, the answer is yes, but not for now. Okay. Always horizontal. So then, so this is like typically like easier than normal. Uh, the it is, normal. it is, it is a little bit because there's, there's not much going on here. It's, it's always the same number. So the, the key characteristic you care about, here's the y-intercept, 0, 28. 0, 28. And then uh, I guess you'd have to do like 0 and 2 for the x-intercepts for the well there, well, there is no x-intercept. It never crosses the x-axis. Oh, right. So it's uh, none. It's none. Yeah, exactly. And then I guess the domains, you just have to write like um, ugh, the backwards E looking thing. Yep. The domain yeah. here is, is X such that X is an element of R. Okay, and then for y, it's the same thing. So it's y such that y is an element of the real numbers, but this time, this, what's, this is where it's a little bit different, is y is only 28. Y is only 28. Okay, I, that makes sense. It's okay. just that number, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing else. All right, and then there's no axis of symmetry, I guess. Or, well, no, I guess. Not really, because it goes forever. The axis of symmetry only applies to the parabolas. To the parabolas, all right. Yeah. And the parabolas would be like in a V shape or like U shape. Yes, yes. All right. Like, all right. So, no, we didn't get to everything, Zach. Um, th there's a lot here. If, if you don't do well, it's th there's so much here. I, I really. Yeah, uh, I, this is taught in a weird way. I, mm -hmm. Don't, don't, please don't get discouraged. That there's a lot more going to happen in, in this this year. Um, so just, uh, and you'll actually see this again. But um, that does conclude our lesson for today. So I'll send you the uh, the notes and the screen recording out shortly. All right, I'll definitely check those out. And hopefully, hope you have a great night, and uh, yeah. see you next time. All right, see you, Matthew. Thank okay, you. you're welcome. Bye now.